This final video in our project is going to read data from our database, retrieve it, and display it on a web page. So here's our database from our last video. You can see that the latest temperature was 45 degrees along with its timestamp. So we're going to leave that open and we're going to switch over to our glitch. And in glitch, I've created a brand new project. I've cleared out the index.html and at the bottom I've added the links to our firebase.js SDK and to our script.js. We want a label, we'll go with temperature and we assign an ID, it's like a placeholder and we'll call this one temp ID. And we'll put something in the middle just to hold the place of where the temperature will actually be displayed. And likewise, we want one for the time. So I'll put in a line break and then we'll put in a line for the time using a very similar method. And we'll call this one time ID. And that's all there really is to our actual web page. It is just two placeholders to show the time and the latest temperature. So let's preview it. And that's exactly what we expected. So once we've connected up our Firebase and written our script, those da dashes will be replaced by the actual temperature and time. So looking at our script.js file, again, I've already populated it with the config data, just like the last video, and the initialized line of code. So again, we have a little head start, and we're gonna type in the rest of our code now to retrieve the data from the database. first thing we need is we need two list variables to hold all our temperatures and all our timestamps. So I'm going to create two blank lists, my temps and my times. I'm going to create the connection variable to our database. So again, similar to the last video, except this time we're going to specify which branch we want to connect to. And if you remember from the last video, the branch that we decided to call it was my temperatures. We now need to create a function that'll handle new incoming data to the database. So when something new is added, we call that a child. When a new child is added, we're going to run this function automatically and hopefully it's going to update our web page. So on child added, we run a run a function and this function is going to return the data from the database and along with the previous child ID. We need a variable to hold the data that has been returned. So let's call it data point. And again, that's from the function so data.val, so we'll get the value from the data that's been returned and put it into data point. And data point contains the labels as well as the data. So my list, my temps, I'm going to push onto that list the data point and any data that has the label temperature. That is defined in our database. We're also going to push onto the my times list the, any data from data point that contains the label time. So finally, we've got this list of times and we've got this list of temperatures. We want to update our HTML. So we're going to look at the document and we're going to get the element ID. Now, in our document, we specified the two IDs, temp ID and time ID. So we ship back into our JavaScript file and include temp ID. And we're going to insert into the HTML the last item off that list. So it's from the list my temps. And what we'll do is we'll get length of the my temps list, take away one. And we'll do something very similar for the time. We're going to copy and paste that and just update the names to time. The name of the list and the name of the label. 
The reason we take away one from the length of the list is because the list length might be five long, but to reference that, remember with computer referencing, it usually starts at zero, so that would be the number four. That's where we take away the one. And we're good to go. We're ready to test our app. So if we go into our HTML and just double check everything's okay, and now if we look at our database and examine the last entry, it was 45 degrees at 11.26 and 40 seconds. So hopefully our web page will now display that. And there you go, it's 45 degrees and you can see the timestamp also matches. And we can test the live function by returning to our previous page that we had created, entering a new temperature, submitting it, check the database. You can see it just turned green there. There it is and hopefully our web page is also updated. And that's the project working and we can confirm it side by side with doing a live test. So again, you can see how quick it is to update the database and pull it back down again. It's pretty fast.